If somebody has told you that you don't need to wash your car after having a ceramic coating put on it. All right, we got your truck all ceramic coated. You'll never have to wash it again. Really? They are absolute liars. Ceramic coatings are not bulletproof. Proper washing techniques is the number one key aspect to maintaining a ceramic coated vehicle, whether that be Adams polishes or any other ceramic coating on the market. In fact, if you do not understand proper washing techniques, you should not even be putting a ceramic coating on your car. You spend all this time to make your car perfect by polishing it, and then you put the ceramic coating on top to lock that in. If you use improper washing techniques, you're working against yourself. Now, the second key aspect to maintaining a ceramic coating are the products that you use, okay? We have products designed specifically for deep cleaning or help maintaining a ceramic coating like the graphene shampoo, okay? In most instances, if you're using proper washing techniques with high quality car care products, you'll be just fine maintaining your ceramic coating. But if you need to use a high degreasing shampoo or something like this, which has extra surfactants to deep clean a ceramic coating, this will help reinstate the hydrophobic properties back onto your ceramic coating. Now things like industrial fallout, which is metal particles that get stuck into your ceramic coating, Iron remover is gonna be something that will break those down much easier. Using a clay mitt that's gonna help remove bonded contaminants from your surface will also help reinstate hydrophobic properties. Now getting into products that have silica or graphene ceramic in them that are quick, you know, spray and wipe quick detailers, they will help bolster the ceramic coating that is on your car, keeping the hydrophobic properties going for longer, making cleaning your car really, really easy. In this video, we're gonna use these products and we're gonna show you the proper washing techniques to help maintain your ceramic coating. Okay, so in this video, we're gonna talk about four different phases, okay? Number one being safe washing, number two being removing bonding contaminants with a clay mitt, okay? Number three, decontaminating with iron remover, okay? These are kinda, they work together, but they're sort of two different phases. And then lastly, we're gonna talk about maintenance products, something that's a spray and wipe product to help reinstate hydrophobic properties, okay? Just so you know, those different phases or chapters are linked in the description or they're laid out in the timeline here. So if you already know everything about safe washing and you wanna learn more or quickly get to the part of the iron remover part, you can do that in the chapters here on our YouTube video. So phase one, safe washing. You need to have a proper washing routine before you even put the ceramic coating on your car. You don't wanna use improper techniques that introduce damage to the ceramic coating that you installed. So safe washing, what is it? Two bucket wash method, two wash pads, utilizing grit guards. There's a lot to it, all right? If you wanna get more in depth about safe washing, click the link in the description here in this video or click the link up in the corner here, okay? Today we're using graphene shampoo as our soap, but when we refer to safe washing, the technique, that's more about the process. That's about how you go about washing your car. And any of our car soaps fit into that process, okay? But when you're washing a ceramic coated vehicle or a graphene ceramic coated vehicle, you wanna use something that's beneficial to that, okay? So graphene shampoo is our choice, okay? It has a couple extra surfactants that are gonna help deep clean your ceramic coated vehicle or graphene ceramic coated vehicle, which this car has been coated with graphene ceramic coating advanced, okay? But graphene shampoo is gonna work on any ceramic coated vehicle. First things first, we have two buckets. They both have clean water in them and they both have grit guards in them, okay? And then in this bucket, I also have two wash pads. Now, we wanna leave one with clean water and we wanna put the graphene shampoo on our actual wash pads. What this is gonna do is ensure that your wash pads have the lubricity from the soap on them. And every time you agitate your wash pads, it's actually gonna generate more suds. So, graphene shampoo on our wash pads and a little bit in the bucket, okay? Just like a, a squirt or one kind of pull in there, okay? We're leaving this one clean. Okay, another aspect to safe washing is utilizing a foam cannon. 
Now, a foam cannon can only be used with a pressure washer, which brings me to a great point. Having a pressure washer is key to performing safe washing. Investing in a pressure washer is a great idea, okay? It's gonna make your washing much more safe. It's gonna use the pressure to get off more of the dirt and grime, which will reduce the chance of washing-induced scratches. If you don't have access or you haven't invested into a pressure washer, you can either go to a pay and spray, which is you put the money in, you get to use their pressure washer, or you can use your hose, which is less effective, but there's a foam gun that can attach to that, which will disperse foam evenly on your car as well. I've already filled this up with water to about the top of the Adams circle here. So we take the top off. We're gonna put two to three squeezes of graphene shampoo in here. So one, two, and because we're crazy, three, all right? Now that's all the soap I'm gonna use for this wash. Why do you wanna use a foam cannon. The soap, not only does it neutralize the water, so it eliminates the chance for water spotting, but it also puts an even layer of foam on your car, giving you more lubricity while you're washing. So this is a huge factor to this. What we wanna do is prep everything first before we introduce water to our car. But if you don't have a deionizer, the water that's coming out of your pressure washer is not going to be filtered and it can cause water spots just by spraying your car down and letting it dry, okay? So before we even put water on here, we wanna have everything ready. I have the soap in my bucket, I have the soap on my wash pads, I have my cannon prepped, okay? And I have my other bucket with water. So now what we can do is we can start rinsing the car, okay? Psych! This is gonna be the hottest side of the car because the sun is right there. Okay, this will be the hottest side of the car, which the water will dry the fastest. Again, water spots. We do not want water spots, all right? So first things first, we wanna go around the other side of the car and we'll start rinsing that side first in the shade and then we'll move back to this side. And once we rinse this side, then we get into the foam cannon. Okay, so we've rinsed the whole car and as you can see up top here, the water beating is amazing. It's crazy, all right? But then when you get down to the bottom half down here, it is flat. It's as flat as a three-day-old soda. This is very typical of a ceramic coating that hasn't been washed after a few weeks, okay? Why is it flat on the bottom? Does it mean that the coating's failed? No, it is not failed. It just means that there's more road grime and more stuff down here on the bottom. Right now, it's essentially, you know, road grime and bonding contaminants and things like that, then the coating, then your clear coat, okay? What we wanna do is take that top layer of bonding contamination road grime, oils, you know, magnesium chloride, whatever it is, we wanna get that off so now your coating is the thing that's exposed and that thing is gonna help be hydrophobic and, and all the stuff that you love, all the reason why you put the coating on your car in the first place. We wanna neutralize the water by putting foam on the car and we do that by using the graphene shampoo and water mixture in here and the foam cannon. On the top, we wanna turn this clockwise all the way. That just gives it the most foam that could come out of the cannon. So I'm gonna use this red part. I'm gonna knock this down. And we wanna make this essentially the height of the car, okay? Cause then what we can do is we can just turn this on and walk and foam the whole car, okay? We don't wanna, we don't wanna do this where we're just blasting it down like this, okay? We wanna get this down so we can just foam and kinda of walk with the car and get foam evenly dispersed on here. All right, we're nice and foamed down. And now look, I am not worried. The foam is neutralizing the water, or the soap mixture is neutralizing the water. We cannot get water spots right now. Now what we wanna do is actually get the suds generated uh, in our wash pads and in our bucket. So we'll put the tip back on, okay? Check it to make sure it's not gonna shoot off. And then we'll just activate the suds really quick. Okay, now we're good. Now, straight up two bucket wash, okay? One bucket with suds and soap, the other with clean water. Both have grit guards and we're gonna utilize that here in a second. Okay, so we're gonna take our first wash pad. Every car has a body line. I sort of use that as a reference to kind of create a top half and a bottom half. And when I use this wash pad and I'm gonna clean the whole top half of the car first. Cleaning your car, washing your car when it's ceramic coated, greatest thing ever. It makes cleaning 
so easy. But again, it doesn't make it bulletproof, okay? It's not gonna protect from rock chips. You know, PPF is gonna protect from rock chips. You know, and we always recommend if you put PPF on your car, ceramic coat over the top of it. So I'm done washing the top half of this side of the car, of the driver's side of the car. And now as I move down to the bottom half, I flip my pad over, my wash pad, and now I can go using a fresh side of the wash pad and start washing this side. I'm gonna make sure that I don't go below kind of this, this section here, which is the most dirty. You can see this side is pretty dirty. So what I don't wanna do is take this and drag it across the whole vehicle. So utilizing a grit guard is gonna be key to this. So this side is the grit part of it. So you rub your wash pad against this and you can see the dirt falls underneath to the bottom. And then the fins prevent the water from swirling and the dirt swirling up to the top. So then what happens is you use the grit guard and when it comes out of the bucket, the dirt and grime falls off of it, goes to the bottom of the bucket. And then we take this on to the soapy bucket and we rub this against the bottom of that grit guard as well. And now we have a fresh wash pad that we can continue washing the car without causing wash induced damage. Now I've essentially used this wash pad for this whole side of the vehicle. Okay, I'm actually gonna set this aside. And as I move on to the other side of the vehicle, I'm gonna go to my second wash pad. Again, another aspect of safe washing, having two wash pads, utilizing them both for both the driver's side and the passenger side will reduce the chance of wash and do scratches. We've washed the whole car. So safe washing done, right? Kind of, okay, we still need to rinse this. But if you noticed when I was done foaming the car, I still had some of the soap solution left. So what I'm going to do is rinse the car, then we're gonna re-foam it, and then we will remove the bonding contamination with the clay mitt, okay? So I'm gonna take this and put it in the soapy bucket now. The sun is right there, so we wanna make sure we're doing the safest way possible. We wanna rinse in the shaded side first so we don't introduce water spots while we're rinsing. Okay, so again, water beating up top, amazing, okay? But down here, you can see, still a little bit flat, but we're getting much better. The thing about it is I guarantee there's some bonded contaminants or maybe a little bit of road tar and things like that on there still that we wanna get off. So that brings us to phase two, which is the removing bonded contaminants part, okay? We put the clay mitt inside our wash bucket. We're gonna utilize the lubricity of the foam from the graphene shampoo. So we foam it again. And also again, we just rinse this. So we don't want the water sitting on there uh, to create water spots. We're gonna neutralize the water again with the shampoo, but also, again, use the lubricity to do the clay mix. Okay, so we got this thing back foamed down. I'm gonna put the tip back on here. And now we're gonna use the trusty old clay mitt, okay? Now we take this, do the glass and the paint. And now all I'm trying to do is go through and remove any bonded contaminants that's on the surface. So road grime, road tar, tree sap, anything essentially that you can't remove while using a wash pad, okay? This is how you take that off the ceramic coating. All right, so we're done using the clay mitt on the car. And the next step or the next phase would be using iron remover, okay? This is continuing on with our decontamination step, okay? Uh, iron remover, when you spray it on your car, it attacks the embedded metallic particles in your ceramic coating or clear coat. It will dissolve them away, making it so those iron particles are not in your clear coat or more specifically in your ceramic coating. So the way you use iron remover is we leave the whole car uh, suds down, okay, because we don't want to rinse the whole car and then get water spots. And what we do is we go to the areas that are probably most contaminated with iron, okay? That's mainly the back section of your car and the very, very back hatch section of your car as well. So you rinse that area off first. Again, keeping the rest of the car suds because we don't want water spots. 
you spray iron remover on a section, I would call it probably a four foot by four foot section. It starts to activate after a few seconds and you'll see little purple lines kind of coming down your car. That is the reaction of the thioglycolate that's in iron remover reacting with the metallic particles that are embedded into your ceramic coating or clear coat. You let that work for a little bit when it looks like it's starting to dry a little bit, you then take your pressure washer or hose, rinse it off. So some cars are contaminated more with iron than others, okay? It just kind of depends on where you drive or, or how much you drive your car. Now, when you go to rinse off the iron mover from the car, if the purple is extremely intense, rinse and repeat. You want to perform the iron remover on your car until there is little to no purple color coming off of your car. Once you're done performing the iron decontamination with Adams Polish's iron remover, you now rinse the whole vehicle. So, time to rinse. All right, so, Let's get into drying this thing. There's a few tools that we can use, especially for a ceramic coated vehicle like this, that are gonna be extremely effective and reduce the chance for scratching. So one thing that is absolutely necessary when you have a car that is ceramic coated is a forced air unit like the Adams Polish's Air Cannon. This is the dual motor version. So this blows air extremely fast, which allows you to dry your car without touching it, okay? In some instances, you can use this to actually fully dry your car without using a towel. But today what I'm gonna do is use the Air Cannon in unison with a high quality drying towel and a graphene detail spray. Now this is sort of phase four, okay? Let's turn this air cannon on, let's blow the water off, and I'll talk about how we reinstate or how we boost the hydrophobics of this car. Touching is scratching, okay? It doesn't matter what form. If you touch your car, you have the potential of scratching it. So if we can use the power of the air to blow the water off, we can touch it less and it makes drying your car much safer. Okay, so we're done using the forced air unit, the air cannon. And now we're gonna go through and we're gonna use the drying towel, okay? There's not much to dry, okay? This is more me wiping down the car with the graphene protection of the graphene detail spray. All the benefits of a ceramic coating, we wanna boost that. I'm gonna use the graphene detail spray and I, again, just a few mists. I don't need to overuse the product. Now, another thing you're probably asking is why don't you just mist the car when it's still wet like you use the pink stuff or the regular detail spray? Well, because this has the added graphene protection in it, if that dries on the surface, like when the water dries with this solution with it, it can be kind of hard to work with. Okay, if you wanna do a more traditional drying method where the car is still wet and you missed it, then you dry it, use the pink stuff, use the detail spray. It is a much, much better drying aid. When you're using this product, long, fast swipes with the towel. Okay, if you're spraying this and you're doing quick little circles, it's just gonna move the product around. One mist, long, fast swipes. It breaks the product down better and it kind of works it into the surface. Just makes it more effective. When you spray, you don't wanna be really close and blast this down. It's too much product. It's, it's gonna move it around on the surface and also it wastes your towel instantly. Pull the trigger hard and move your hand at the same time. Okay, like that. I covered this much of an area in one spray. And in most instances, one spray is more than enough. All right, we're done washing, we're done maintaining the surface of our ceramic coated vehicle. This is extremely slick again, okay? What we did today, we did four phases. Phase one, proper washing technique. Phase two was we removed bonding contaminants with our clay mitt and we used the foam from the graphene shampoo as our lubricant to remove the bonding contaminants. Then phase three to that, it's kind of an extension of decontaminating the surface. That's using an iron remover. Lastly, what we did, we dried the car safely, okay? We used forced air. 
But also what we did is we used the graphene detail spray to help boost our ceramic coating, our graphene ceramic coating. And again, if you have a normal ceramic coated vehicle, non-graphene, something like CS3 or Adams Ceramic Boost is going to be the perfect product for you. Having a ceramic coating, Yes, it's amazing, okay? It's intended to make your life easy, but it's not bulletproof. So realize, if you have a ceramic coated vehicle, you still need to wash it properly and you still need to maintain it, but it's gonna make your life so much easier for the long run.